My name is Katie, and today I am meeting Lord Richard Layard, who is the Director of the Wellbeing Programme at the Centre for Economic Performance at the London School of Economics. A definition. Lord Layard is an economist, and he advises the UK government on mental health policy. At first, his work focused on reducing unemployment and inequality. Now he's working on discovering what factors influence human happiness, one of them being mental illness. I'm a musician and as a musician I'm always exploring myself and so naturally my music is very telling of my mental health issues. In 2015 when I was diagnosed with anorexia they said you're always going to have anorexia and I thought that is horrific, that's, that's, I can't live with this for the rest of my life but I understand now that once you have a mental health issue you do live with it for life but it's something that you learn to cope with and music was just my way of coping with it. There's a lot of campaigns at the moment happening across all sorts of mental health charities and, and companies and policies that early intervention is key and I do believe that family and friends around them as well, I feel like that is a, that is a big thing that we should be pushing for family and friends to notice these symptoms. From the interview today I hope that I'll find out a little bit more about how my economic position might affect my happiness. Um, I feel like exploring yourself is, is a life mission and um, I feel like Richard's going to know a lot more about happiness than I definitely do. Thank you very much for coming and talking to us today. Pleasure. I'm going to start off, go straight into the deep end and ask you how did it become a focus that you were looking at happiness whilst everyone else was looking at mental health and inequalities and poverty and you were kind of looking at the positive side of everything. Well, <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it, but uh, in fact when I was an undergraduate I studied history uh, and one of the uh, subjects was political philosophy, that was my favourite subject, and I read Jeremy Bentham. Ah, okay. uh, and uh, he said that the way we should judge a society is by the happiness of the people and I always thought from then on that that was the greatest idea of the modern age really, that um, we wouldn't uh, uh, expect uh, uh, to uh, achieve immortality uh, necessarily or uh, wealth necessarily, but we should be seeing the people enjoying their lives. They didn't have much idea then, of course, about psychology. Um, and uh, it's only recently really that psychology has given a scientific basis to how we can promote people's happiness. So policymakers should measure the happiness of the population and they should be choosing policies on the basis of how much happiness they generate for every pound that's spent. Uh, I think managers should be measuring the happiness of their workers and uh, thinking about ways in which they can improve that. Uh, I certainly think that schools should be measuring the happiness of their children. So we're involved in a, a program called Healthy Minds which is a huge trial that's being done and there are many others uh, which I think will make it possible to teach children to be happy and of course the schools must be organised in ways that don't generate misery I mean, <laughs> you've got to deal with bullying, bullying of teachers because I do, I do think, and I still think it's true that the, the most effective way that we can spend any spare money that we have is to improve mental health most people who suffer from mental health problems even in rich countries, get no help. Uh, it's about a third in Britain, which is about the highest number in any country. In particular, uh, and this is where we've so neglected in Britain in, uh, in, in childhood, because at least half of the mental health problems that emerge in life emerge by the time a person is 15, and that they should be getting direct help at that stage. So I was very excited by the fact that uh, we had NICE, which is one of the great British institutions, reviewed the evidence of how we can help people with mental health problems. That was done in the, soon after 2000. And then, of course, nothing happened. So uh, we agitated for that to be changed, and that's what led to the Improving Access to Psychological Therapies program, which has built up um, a, a service in every part of the country uh, for giving evidence-based treatment to people suffering from depression or, or crippling anxiety disorders. We haven't yet done the same for children. <laughs> and that's the great task now uh, facing Britain. But do you think that maybe 
if that happened, not only would mental health be improved, but physical conditions might not be as, as intense. Sure, no, we, we know now that people with a physical illness who also have a mental health problem, they, uh, their physical health deteriorates faster and they take up a lot more healthcare resources so that <laughs> it's actually in the interest of healthcare providers um, to put some money into mental health because it will save mon money elsewhere. Um, but we also know that among people who are not yet um, ill with any particular condition, they're more likely to become ill if they have a physically ill if they have a mental health problem because of the way that operates on the immune system and the endocrine system and so on. Do you think that mental health and happiness are related? Do you think that happiness is something that we should instill into people that are suffering with mental health issues? I, I think that um, an important finding of the happiness research, and this is something we've been doing here a lot of, is that mental health problems not caused by loss of a job, l poverty, poor housing, or any of those other things, but mental health problems arising in some other way. But the other issue, relation between mental health and, and happiness, is how do you get people out of mental health problems. And the idea that you, you help somebody with a mental health problem by trying to focus almost entirely on their problem and, the, and what's wrong, <laughs> rather than, than introduce or build on the things in the person already which are right. I, how do you get somebody out of a bad hole? Do you try and deal with their weaknesses or do you try and build on their strength? I agree. Building on a person's strength is a very important way of dealing with mental health problems. Do you think that mental health has a price? I, I should say that the situation has improved a lot in government. I mean, there is a lot more understanding and interest in these issues now than there ever has been before. But uh, we should be spending a lot more um, on helping people with mental health problems. Um, we, we, of course, have to and do it in a way which um, is effective, which means you can't just tomorrow do it. You've got to train people in evidence-based therapies. Uh, you've got to build, build up the services which have good systems of supervision, good systems of uh, outcome monitoring, all the rest of it, um, which will take some time. What is interesting is that for problems of depression and, and anxiety and conduct problems for younger people. You're not talking about huge sums of money. I mean, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable how we can sign off for 50 billion for a high-speed railway, and yet to get you know, 100 million for child mental health in two years' time, that's a real battle. Mm -hmm. and, and this is, shows a complete uh, wrong set of priorities um, at, at the top uh, and uh, we need, I think, um, a, a completely different approach uh, really to public spending um, which takes the state into areas which previously it didn't think it was its job. So if you go back to say before 1870 the state didn't think it was its job to make pe help people to be productive workers. And now I think it's got to think its job is to help people to be effective parents, effective partners, effective people enjoying their lives. So this, this is actually not a very expensive area. Um, it doesn't involve huge equipment or anything of that sort. Um, so we, we ought to be seeing uh, big programs of helping people with mental health problems, um, programs training teachers um, to teach children to be happy, uh, programs to help parents uh, understand how to uh, bring up their children <laughs> to be happy and to remain happy when they have children, which many of them stop being, um, programs to uh, help parents uh, when they're in conflict with domestic violence, uh, alcohol, drugs. I mean, all of these things ought to be having 
a lot more money spent on them, but it's not big money, mm -hmm. but it's more money. Yeah. Is there any question which you regularly ask yourself? Well, I rather agree with John Stuart Mill, who said if you ask yourself if you're happy, you cease to be. I don't think you should be thinking about whether you're happy all the time. But um, I think there's a lot to be said for your, what your grandmother uh, does, which is thinking about what you can feel grateful for. I really want to know what makes you happy. Well, I am luckily married to somebody that I love. That's uh, number one. Uh, I have a job that I love and I, I like to feel it's useful. I think if I didn't feel it was useful, uh, it wouldn't give me the same satisfaction. And um, I play tennis twice a week. Brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pleasure.